Hello and welcome everyone to this session. Uh, this is uh, in uh, track B, the last session for this conference. Um, the, but, but, but uh, last but not the least, and in fact, probably one of the most interesting ones. Um, so this session is gonna talk about project collaboration management, especially simplifying the multi-project environment. We have here with us uh, uh, Liet Landsman. Uh, she's partner of Mal uh, Metan Consulting Group who is also one of our gold sponsors. So th thank you very much for the sponsorship and support for this event. Uh, when you get a moment, please go visit their virtual booth page uh, to get uh, in touch with any of the representatives. They have, we have their contact information and uh, things you could download for future reference. With, uh, with, with having said that, without much further ado, Liat, please take it away. Thank you very much. So um, good day, everybody. Thank you for joining this session. Uh, my name is Liat and I will be talking today about project col collaboration, its importance and how it can help us simplify the complex multi-project environment that uh, we are all living today. Uh, before we start, let us thank our sponsors for enabling this uh, 24 hours almost finished uh, wonderful event, sharing all the information that you were able to uh, get this past uh, day. A little bit about myself, uh, my name is Liat. Uh, I'm a partner at Matan Consulting with more than 18 years of experience in the field of project management, working with different verticals and different organizations. Uh, today I'm leading uh, Matan Solution Business Development and responsible for all our solutions. And I'm enthusiastic about project management, which I hope to share with you today and a great believer in keeping things simple. Matan Consulting, uh, in a nutshell, is a leading Israeli project management consulting company for more than 20 years now. Uh, we are a project gold partner and a member of the Microsoft Project Advisory Council. And over the years, we have developed a set of uh, add-on solutions designed to enhance the PPM environment and help users uh, with different functionalities, which I hope to share with you today. So um, in my presentation, I will talk about um, the emerging work environment today, the challenges that it presents, what we call the multi-project environment. I will then talk about the importance of the collaboration when facing those challenges. And uh, I will then go to talk about collaborative project management, what it means, and I will demo a solution that uh, collaborates those uh, ideas. Uh, and then, of course, I'll be happy to answer questions at the end of the presentation. Okay, so um, as technology advances, uh, we all find ourselves today in a real-time uh, environment with abundance of information that is rapidly changing. Uh, we need to react quickly, we need to be flexible, limber, we need to roll with the tide and react as quick as we can. And I mean, just in these 23 hours of uh, conference, we've seen eight or nine, I think, presentation talking about agility and transformation, uh, digital transformation and uh, uh, artificial intelligence. So these are subjects that interest us today. This is what uh, the workplace uh, talks about and, and the things that we think and look for. Uh, but what does it mean to our project management environment? What does it mean in our day-to-day -day life as project professional uh, people? It means more projects, it means more teams, many stakeholders that we need to communicate with and to maximize effectiveness and responsiveness. It means that in short, we have a more complex environment and yet we need to be updated, we need to focus on the right information at the moment that we need it. And the question then becomes, how can we create it? How can we create a project management environment, a PPM environment that support all that and yet is not too complicated? And this is what I will try to address uh, in this presentation. So specifically when we talk about the multi-project environment, we're talking about two scenarios. Uh, one is the matrix, uh, which we see here on the left, and the other one is the program. Uh, and when we talk about those, we have here, uh, let me make it clear. 
Okay. We have here in the matrix organization, we have the project managers. Each one is managing their project. And we also have the teams, the professional teams that deliver all kinds of scope of works to these projects. And in order for the project manager to complete his work, he needs to receive from different teams those specific deliverables, which we see here in this matrix. And in the program, which we see here on the right, we have different program managers, which are large scale uh, work plans, and they include this smaller scope of works. And in this case here, for example, we have this program manager, which receives this scope from this project and that one from this project, and we have another program and so forth. And what we want in these environments, in these scenarios, is we want each manager, each one of those project managers, or program managers, and also the team managers, each one of them to own their part of the schedule. Yet at the same time, we want them to see the full picture of everything, the overall program, the overall project, everything that is happening in real time. We want them to be able to answer who does what, when, and where. And when changes happen, for example, let's say here in this team, something happened, and they need to change their commitment. They need to change their schedule and change their work plan. What we want to then happen is that all the projects will understand what these changes mean. We want these changes to re be reflected in the overall project status. We want these project managers to be alerted that the change has happened, and sometimes even other teams that are impacted by this change. Let's take an example. Let's say this is a project manager in a high-tech uh, company and he's responsible to develop this new product. And when he does that, uh, he actually needs to coordinate and collaborate with all these different teams. And it is said that today in the work environment, we see twice as much teams as we did five years ago. So these are a lot of stakeholders and a lot of people that you need to coordinate with, like legal and testing and purchasing. And he needs to negotiate with all of those and understand their scope of work, which he doesn't manage in his own work plan, yet he needs to understand at every point in time what it means to my project, what it means to my responsibility, to my work plan. And this is what we're trying to simplify. This is what we're trying to deliver. We're trying to make this project manager, when he is responsible for developing this new product, uh, an environment that will answer those questions easily as possible. And in this emerging environment, collaboration then becomes the key team. I mean, the need to align, to share, to communicate with all these stakeholders across wide variety of, of subjects. Sometimes those teams will sit in different locations, in different countries. And um, many of the pressures, many of the issues that this project manager encounter can be de-risked by creating a real platform for sharing information in real time. And when we're working together, what we can do is we can accomplish more. And when it comes to the uh, PPM environment, we can then need to, we actually need to make sure that um, the PPM, the collaborative PPM environment, will then give us the opportunities to share information in real time, to manage all those dependencies among the different teams. It needs to be based on trust, so we will openly share information and support strong communication. It is said that today, and, and actually one of our project managers that we work with in a pharmaceutical company told me that not long ago, that about 90% of the time is spent in communication. We spend a lot of time communicating with different stakeholders, with different people that we need to align with. So this is what we want to achieve. We want to achieve a project management environment that supports all that. And um, collaboration becomes really important, the work environment today, because um, the amount of time that we spend in collaborative activities today is 50% more than what we did, let's say, 10 years ago. And it is also shown that if we do these collaborative activities effectively, if we're really good at collaborating within the organization with all those teams, then we are 5.5 times more likely to be highly performers. And this is why organizations today strive to be really effective in collaborating. So the question then becomes how? 
how can we do that? How can we provide uh, and support those project managers with a collaborative project management environment, which will easily give us all those uh, basic uh, information and collaboration that we need. And um, over the years, and with our experience working uh, in the field of project management with different scenarios and different organization, uh, we came to realize that uh, we can summarize it into three things that we need to give the project manager in order to really support effectively the collaboration challenge. And these three things are to see, to decide, and to communicate effectively. So what does it mean? To see is to actually be able to understand the impact of changes, the impact of the dependencies that I have among all those teams that I work with. It means that I need to easily identify what the status of my team is, my project is at any moment. I need to be able to answer the question, what is the current status of my project? Without the need to dig in deep, to analyze uh, a lot of abundance of information. I need to be able to see it and understand it. And uh, my project work plan needs to be supported by all the underlying work plans that I depend upon, by all the functional areas and teams that uh, I need to receive information from. And when I answer the question, what is my current status? I actually answer it based on all that information on the overall status of the project. And we want to be able, in this abundance of information, focus our project managers, focus their attention on what is really important. We want to help them clearly see the important information they need to see. So this is the first point. The second one is to decide. We need to give them the ability to help them maintain their ownership over the work plan. They need to see that um, the work plan that they're working on, that they are uh, accountable for, is not being dictated or not being impacted without they're knowing it by other stakeholders, by other work plans. And I've heard this uh, often from, from project managers, you know, um, it is great to link work plans. I really understand why it's important, but I don't want someone else to dictate what my plan would look like. So we need to find a way to maintain the ownership of each and every one of those stakeholders, of those managers, yet at the same time, give them the opportunity to control and uh, their work plan and focus on the conversation they need to make and not on who changed my work plan and why did it change. So what we need to do is find a way to maintain this ownership and help them in their decision. And this leads us to the third point, which is effective communication. We need to support the communication of the project manager in an effective way such that he will know whom he needs to talk to or negotiate with and what about. So it will give them clear indication on the open issues and the conflicts that they need to put their attention on. And um, if they need to negotiate, they know what they need to negotiate about and what the impact is or what the desired result is. And uh, it needs to be based on real information, not estimation, not thought, not might what might what might happen, sorry, uh, but looking at the uh, real information without the need to dig in deep. So we need to help them gain insights based on real data and then interact effectively. So what we were looking to do is build an environment that is based on these three. And this is what we set out to do. And the solution that we're offering, the concept that we're basing our, our solution on, is built on the platform of the Microsoft project and an add-on uh, developed by Matan, which is called Masterlink. And Masterlink is an add-on to project users. It gives uh, within the project environment these additional reports and indicators and functionalities that enhances the environment of the project management. And by doing that, it gives the uh, project manager the ability to own their part of the project, manage it with all the information available and easy to read, and still maintain control and understand 
uh, where my project is and be able to answer the question, what is the status of my project? And again, based on real information from other projects. So instead of just um, talking about it, I will shortly demo and, and show you what it looks like. And um, what we've been doing is using this approach, we are able to um, support and give value to our clients in different uh, scenarios and different business cases, um, which I've marked here the, the three major ones. Uh, the first one being the matrix-based organization we've talked about. So this, for example, would be iTech in, um, companies and uh, pharmaceutical companies where they need to delegate work from a project to a team and follow up on that scope of work. Uh, we also have um, IT departments, which is also a great beneficiary of, of this approach. Uh, we lately assimilated this approach with an IT department where beforehand they were doing all that manually. There was someone there who was whose role was to follow up on those dependencies and give those alerts, but it was all done manually. So imagine the great benefit of, of implementing such an environment where they can share this high volume of project based on shared resources and follow up easily on what's going on. And then the last one being the program management where we have these large scale projects that need to be break down into smaller projects and still follow up on the overall status, create the master plan to create the easily the overall view uh, and um, manage them independently, yet again, keeping the uh, one big picture available and easy to read. So without no further ado, let me go to our um, demo and I'll show you how these concepts come to be in the uh, actual project environment. Um, what I will show you is an example of, let's say a product development. Um, we have a company who needs to develop this new product and I am the product manager and um, yeah, keep a, a second here we go so this is my project plan I am the uh, project manager I'm responsible for this product development and I have my own work plan and as you can see, um, this is my environment once, once Masterlink is installed. This is the project online with uh, the add-on already part of the environment. Um, now let's say, let's imagine that um, I've arrived at the office Monday morning and I know that last week all the teams and areas have done their evaluations and updated their schedules and I want to know what impact it has on my project. And I've done previously all the planning and all the linking. I've established all the agreements with the different um, project plans that I'm dependent upon. And what I see here is my project plan that is incorporating all the information from all the different projects. So uh, let's say I arrive in the morning at the office and what I wanna see is, you know, where do I need to focus my attention? Where are my problems? And I will do that by opening this window on the right, which is the master link summary window, this one here. And what it will do, it will give me a summary of all the information regarding the dependencies that I have with other stakeholders. And I can then easily open all the change links, which is this light bulb indicator here, which also appears on this column here. And it will tell me that these three tasks in my project plan are depending upon other projects and these projects make changes. So it's really easy for me to see where the changes happen. And I can just click this one, which will take me directly to the task that was impacted. And as you can see, it gives me an alert. It did not change my work plan. It only told me, put your attention here, look what's going on. And I can then open the master link window on the bottom part of the screen, which we just like that. And I can now see what is my predecessor task. This is the purchasing department who made the change to this milestone. And I can see that my plan right now is to complete this by December 4th, but the new plan is now pushing it out a week. 
And in order to see what it means, I can choose to accept the change. And you can see that it changed my work plan. And I can now evaluate what it means, what my work plan would be if I accept this change. And if I see a problem with that, I can roll back and say, you know what, I need to understand better why this change happened. Maybe we can negotiate, maybe we can find a mitigation, maybe you can go back a week and keep the original date. And I can then choose to accept and align, which will then give me the indication, everything's okay, no gaps here. Or again, roll back and say, no, this needs to stay on my focus. I still am not completely sure this is what I want. So this is a really easy way to follow up on what's going on in my work plan regarding to all the different predecessors and the different stakeholders that I depend upon and need to receive information from. And whenever I will open the summary window here on the right, it will just give me the most updated status of all those dependencies and agreements that I have with other projects. And this is not opening the actual project. This is based on the database that the master link has and it updates and I can refresh the database if I want at any given point. What I can also see here is all the get, all the project that I get information from, all the predecessors. And I can also see all my clients, all the other projects which I am committed to deliver something to that I need to give them information. So I can also see who depends upon me. And this is an easy way to understand what's going on in my project. Now establishing those links is an easy process. And let me just show you a quick example of what it looks like. So uh, let's say this is a milestone that I have in my project. And again, this is the program uh, file. This is the work plan of developing the new product that we're looking to develop. And I know that the training is something that um, I will be receiving from another team. And I want to make sure that my planning here reflects the information that uh, they are actually planning upon. So I will open this form on the right, which is add agreement. And it will take me through four small steps to establish these agreements, these new, um, these new links. The first step will be to choose what type of logic, what type of link it is. And uh, what Masterlink offers is a variety of link types in two modes. One is approval required, which I have just shown you how it works. But in other cases, I may decide that I don't wanna have approval. I mean, if something changes with this specific task, then I want it to be automatically approved because this is something that I cannot negotiate, I cannot impact. But in this case, I just wanna use the finish to start and I want to approve it. I want to know when a change happened and I wanna be the one who controls it. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose this type here. Then Masterlink will take me to the second point and this is actually a really cool one because this is something that Project Out of the Box does not give us. Um, this gives me the opportunity to link to projects that are not in the site collection that I'm working on. So uh, in the emerging environment we're talking about, I may have in my company teams that sit in a different continent, in a different site, in a different department, and we have decided to manage all those different entities in different site collections. So I can actually choose a different uh, instance and link to those projects. So in the project online for environment, environment, for example, if I have subcontractors that work on the online, I can actually establish real links to those projects. I will then go ahead and choose the project which delivering this activity to me and I will just choose this one here, for example. And by double clicking it, I'm again, I'm not opening the actual project. It will not impact my performance. I am just opening and accessing the Masterlink database. And once I have chosen the project, I will then receive the list of all the activities this project includes. And I can just scroll through or write something and find the activity that I'm interested in. So let's just say this is this one here. 
And what I see here is the entire list of the project. It can be the summary uh, tasks, the task, the milestone, everything. And when I click OK, oh, sorry, I've actually created the new task and it tells me this is a new task. And it also shows me what is the predecessor that I'm linked to. And I can go ahead and approve it because this is what I've chose to do. And I can see that when I am approving it, it changes my project plan. And I can again roll back and say, okay, I need to negotiate it or I can accept. And from now on, this is what my project would look like. So it's an easy step and it offers some uh, additional features which the project out of the box does not offer, like the different types of links, the different modes, and also the ability to link cross instances. Um, now, another important feature that we have here, and we've talked about the matrix-based organization, is um, is what we call the work package. And a work package is an important link type, which I will take a few minutes and talk about. So the work package link type, which is the one here, really enables us to create a link to another work plan, which will not just follow start or finish, it will follow up on that task start to finish. So it will actually mirror the task the entire task. And we use that to delegate work plans. So let me give you an example. Again, this is my uh, project plan. I'm responsible for the overall product development. And um, this integrated test is something that is actually being performed by another, by another department, the engineering department. Now, what interests me as the project manager is to make sure this starts and completes when I need it. And I am not interested in all the details of what this work plan means. But for the engineering department, obviously, it is important to develop an entire work plan here and follow up on all the different details, tasks, and milestones that are included. But in my work plan, I don't want to see all that noise. I just want to make sure that I know when it starts and finishes. So in this case, I will use the work package link. And in my work plan, as you can see, it is just this one line with a start and a finish, and it links to this one summary task in the engineering department. But if I will open the engineering department project plan, and let's just go to the other project, and this will open the, uh, the engineering department project, but it will not give me uh, access to change it, it will just show me um, the project as I don't have permissions to change it. So you see it opened the other project and I am now the engineering project uh, work plan. And here you can see it is not just one line, it's actually an entire plan. Now of course for the sake of demo this is like five, six lines, but it can be as long as you need it to be. This can be the entire project plan if this is the case. And and if I'm now looking from the engineering project manager, the engineering department manager, team manager, what I'm seeing is this is what I need to deliver. And if I'm standing here, oh, sorry. I need to deliver it to the program. I can see exactly what is the task that is my successor. And I can also see here in red what the program is expecting of me. So I know that I am way exceeding what now the program is planning. And if I go back to the program again, so I'm changing the files, I'm going back to the program, to my work plan, you can see that it is just this one line, but it represents the entire work plan as the engineering department has planned it. And I can see that right now, their plan is very different from what I'm expecting to see. And I can then again accept it and see how it changes my work plan, or I can roll back and keep it as an alert, as a call for an action, and negotiate, understand, and talk to the engineering department to see what can we do to mitigate this risk. Now, this light bulb will keep alerting me as long as one, until, sorry, or I accept it, or the engineering department will change their schedule and go back to the original one. 
So as long as none of those two happened, I will keep seeing it and I can always go back to the summary and see where my problems might be. So it's an easy way to track and see what it looks like. Also, when I look at my Gantt chart, let me just make it a little bit bigger. Here we go. I can see in green my predecessor. I can also, I can always see what it looks like. The blue line is my planning and the green line is my predecessor. So it's very easy to follow up where we are and what my plan looks like. So once we've done that, we've established the links, we put all the information in front of us, we can easily understand and answer the question, what is the status of my project? And whenever a change happens, it's easy to follow up on and see what it means. Now, um, another two, I think important features that support this collaboration uh, in the project management environment are the export and the import, and I'll just say a few words on each one. So the export is actually what I've shown you as the work package link, but it actually is something that I can use at the beginning of the planning. Let's say that I have now uh, been assigned a new project that I need to develop this new uh, work plan for another, uh, great product that we want to, to develop. And uh, I have this basic uh, work plan and I wanna make sure that the other departments are gonna have in their work plan the scope that uh, they are responsible for. So I can then delegate, sorry, I can then delegate uh, that task to them and actually create it for them. And I will just follow the same steps as I have when creating a new link, only this time I will not link to an existing task, I will create a task for them. And they will receive an alert saying you have been assigned this new task. And this supports the top-down planning. And then we have the import, which is more the bottom-up planning. And let me show you how this works. So let's say that, um, in the same case of, of other um, another product that I need to plan. And this time the sub projects or the teams already created their work plan and I wanna create my master schedule. Only I don't wanna write again everything that already exists in these plans. I want to reflect them in my work plan. So I can choose to import those tasks that already been put in the different uh, work plan. I will then open the specific project which I'm interested in and I can just mark the task or milestone that I'm interested in copying and by clicking OK, it will just be copied into my work plan with the associated work package link, which means it's reflected in my work plan exactly as it is planned by the person owning this task. So it's an easy way to support the planning, the top down, the bottom up, and then execute during the project and really easily follow up on the changes. Now, based on all that information that we have created, we're also offering the reports. And we have here two reports, the critical path report and the give and get. And I'll show you what they look like and how, um, how they can help us. So let's start with the critical path report. The critical path is actually calculating a critical path to a chosen task or the entire project, if you choose that. And it will calculate that critical path to that task crossing different projects. So if I have used MasterLink correctly and I have built all the dependencies and my work plan is reflecting all the underlying work plans that I'm depending upon, then when I do this calculation, when I do this analysis, it will show me what are the tasks in my project? And then it will go on to analyze the critical path in other projects that I depend upon. And it will co keep continuing it, crossing to other projects if I've linked to other projects until it will get to the final task of that path. So I, what I see now is the entire critical path crossing the entire program 
of my project. And what you see here is also an interesting information because it gives me the alerts, not just in my project, but in other projects. So for example, here, this line is a line that um, a change happened, but it did not yet approve it. So it will give me the two scenarios. It will give me the worst case scenario, what happens if this change will be approved, and it also show me where the work plan is today. So I can really assess the risk on that critical path. And then the last report, and you can choose here, you know, to, to change projects or to change task. And this is, as you can see, not being generated in the project professional. It is actually being generated in, in, the, in the web environment. You can access it from the project professional or from the PWA. So actually, also those who do not use the project professional can access this information. And um, the last report is the give and get report. And basically this is the entire information of all the dependencies of all the different um, links that I have with other projects. And I can see it from the get, from my predecessors, or I can see it as a give. I can change the direction of the report if I choose to switch here. And it will just give me all the tasks in my projects that have dependencies in other projects. And when I choose a task, it will just show me which is the predecessor in the other project. So this task here, the end of, is being um, linked to the engineering department project and specifically this task here. And if the task that, uh, that I'm linked to has changed, then you can see I will be giving the light bulb alert again, and it will highlight where the change, uh, what the change is. So it's again easy to follow up on where my focus needs to be. What is the important information that I need to look at? And um, finally, another type of information that we offer here is, um, is the history. So if I choose the trend analysis here, for a specific task, it will show me what is the history of this link. Uh, I have a predecessor in another project and I wanna know, did it change much? Did they change their commitment many times? And when I negotiate with them, when I talk with them, I wanna be able to base my communication on real data, on real historical data. And this is what it shows me. So the link was first established, the agreement was first established on January 5th with this specific due date. But then a few days later, the due date was pushed to uh, six days and then later it was pushed again. And I can, with that data, really negotiate well and, and communicate effectively. And this is the information and this is what the master link gives um, the PPM environment and what it looks like. So let me go back to my presentation here to conclude. So um, by now I hope that I was able to show you how this environment uh, enables our project manager in the multi-project complex environment to easily and clearly view and understand the project status so uh, we can see and understand clearly and, and easily. We can then decide because each project manager own their part of the project, their part of the schedule, and um, they decide whether to accept or reject or leave the alert and negotiate. And um, we help uh, with all the visual indications and the reports really focus the communication on what needs to happen, what is the result that we're looking for, and based on real information. And with that, what we have created is the collaborative project management environment, and it's simplifying the way that we manage project, the way that we analyze the information and the multi-project environment. So by applying this approach, uh, we gain the following benefits. One, is that um, using the, the strong visualization capabilities, we uh, save our managers time and effort. 
they do not need to dig in deep, they do not need to analyze the information from different projects and different work plans. They can have all the information in one place and easily see where their attention need to be uh, focused on. The second is the accountability. Uh, we keep each manager as the owner of his her work plan. Uh, we can create the situation where we have different parts of the schedule being managed by different managers and still keep the overall picture clear and be able to answer the question, what is my project status? And this is done openly because uh, I can share information knowing that it is my decision. So it increased trust and the motivation to share the information. And finally, we help our manager decide and drive decision based on real data, consolidated data, and um, that reflect the overall picture. And by doing that, we reduce the risk. We have them focus in real time on what is really important. And with that, I conclude my presentation and we'll be more than happy to answer questions. All right, um, let me check chat. <clears throat> if anybody has any questions, feel free to post them on the chat window so that we can uh, read them out and Liat can answer them. Okay. All right, I see no questions coming in. Um, no problem. So all right, so if you, yeah, go ahead, sorry. I can just thank everybody for attending this session. If you will have any information, then these are my contacts and um, you're more than welcome to send an email or enter our sponsorship booth where you can leave a message or download our product um, page. That's it. All right, thanks everyone for joining this session. Uh, if you have more questions, um, please contact Liat or the contact details that, uh, that are being shown on the screen. Please also take a moment to visit the Metan um, Consulting uh, Virtual Booth. Um, and and the, like I said, there are downloadable material that you could use and also uh, talk to uh, or contact, get in touch with this company. Um, again, Liat, thank you for the sponsorship um, and thank you for the support. Thank you very much. Have a great right. day, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>